Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another devlog for my still nameless pirate game. In this one, I'd like to get the project to a state where I can start testing with friends, so most of what I'll be doing in the next couple weeks is fixing bugs and tying off some loose ends. For example, in the current state, if a player disconnects from the server and then reconnects, the server will crash. Having to restart the server every time someone disconnects is a real pain, especially when testing, so that definitely needs to change, and hopefully by the end of the video I'll have had a chance to record some multiplayer gameplay with a friend or two. Oh my god, I'm up and about. <laughs> Can you see me? Yep. <laughs> also, I think it's worth mentioning that it has now been over two years since I originally began working on this project. On January 5th in 2019 was when I first set up the basic multiplayer connection, and by the end of the month I had the first waves properly synchronized between multiple clients. I was still in high school back then, and I spent a lot of the last two years exploring and learning about various aspects of shader programming and multiplayer development, which sort of explains why the game may not seem particularly far along yet. I've learned so much during this time, and I really appreciate all of you that have come along for the ride so far. However, we're really just getting started, and I'm even more excited to finally get this project into the early playtesting phase. So, I've just spent the last 5 days trying to track down a bug, and quite unsurprisingly, it was just a tiny oversight on my part that made my new network code completely unable to send information to all connected clients. The result was that the first player could connect just fine, but when a second player connected, it would only spawn his player object on the first player's end. Basically, the first client to connect would work fine and could see everyone else, but any other clients that connected wouldn't even properly load into the game. This whole thing has left me quite exhausted, so I'm going to take a bit of a break, but in the meantime if you'd like to help me feel a bit less down about chasing a bug for this long, you could feed my ego and the mighty algorithm all for the low price of one like button being smashed. That's an incredible 2 for 1 deal. Anyways, this is exactly why I need to do a lot more testing with Riptide before making an updated tutorial. Who knows how many other things I overlooked which could cause serious issues. In other news, I also fixed the server crashing whenever players reconnected, although the player object itself still isn't removed on other clients when someone disconnects, so that's next on the list of things to fix. Just a quick update today, I sent the build to one of my friends and we spent a couple hours messing around this evening. It was a lot of fun and there were quite a few hilarious moments, but it also revealed that I have a lot of work to do. A large majority of the issues that we ran into seem to be related to Riptide and not the game itself, which is both a relief and a bit of a nightmare, as I'd honestly much rather be fixing bugs in the game than dealing with more networking witchcraft. However, duplicate packets are a common occurrence and causing problems right now, and that isn't the game's fault, so I'm going to try and prevent that from happening within the network code. We'll catch up when that's taken care of. Oh, okay. oh wait, I sunk. I didn't repair my hole. <laughs> There's oh god, wow. I've had three holes. Oh, stop, you're desyncing the whole thing. <laughs> so I fixed the duplicate packet issues with Riptide, along with a whole swath of other miscellaneous bugs. I also modeled a proper barrel on stream. Thank you to everyone that hung out and helped me improve my blender skills, by the way. And I added a quick game button. I've already been informed that this was a mistake, though, as obviously the best way to keep your players around is to just not let them leave. On top of all that, I've switched to a multi-scene setup on the client. Having a separate scene for the game world makes it much easier to handle disconnections, because instead of having to ensure that all game related objects like players, ships, and islands are destroyed, we can simply unload the scene and it's taken care of. But yeah, being able to send the game to friends and mess around with them has been hugely motivating. Tasks that I would have normally avoided doing suddenly aren't so bad anymore, and I've just been overall really productive during the last few days. Now I know that what I've done so far in this devlog isn't crazy exciting, since it's mostly been a lot of fixing stuff that's broken, but I do still want to add a new mechanic, namely bailing water. One of the most annoying parts of playtesting right now is that once your ship takes damage and has a hole, you can repair it, but any water that is leaked in is staying there, and you have absolutely no way to get it out. Before I do that though, I'm going to switch to Unity's new input system, simply because I somehow have an itch to do that, which is, like, unheard of, because... Well that's not very interesting, and it's probably going to take a while. Alright, so I switched to Unity's new input system, which took some time to get used to, largely because the documentation isn't the greatest, but it's working quite nicely now. However, I wasn't really planning to check in with you guys until I had water bailing working, but I discovered a bug in my water shader today which I just need to show you before I fix it. 
When I take the water plane and move it vertically, the island's wave flattening effect doesn't seem to move up with it, which causes this to happen. Although this is a bug and was entirely unintentional, it's a reminder of something I've been thinking I'd like to add in the future. Maelstroms. I don't want to promise anything yet because I'm not 100% sure it's actually feasible, but I think Maelstroms would be an awesome addition which could lead to some really cool combat situations. Okay. Alright, alright. We're both one shot. <laughs> oh, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words, right? <laughs> It's one day later, and I'm happy to report that you can now bail water out of the ship. This was actually an interesting problem to solve, and I think it's worth taking you guys through my thought process, because I spent quite a while just thinking through various possible ways of doing it. Initially, I was trying to come up with a way to hook the bailing mechanic into my existing interaction system, which works by raycasting from the player's camera in the direction they're looking. If that ray hits an object on the interactable layer, an interaction is initiated. With the water inside the ship, this would have worked by giving the water some sort of collider, putting it onto the interactable layer, and then adding the necessary interaction logic to it. However, the first problem with this approach is that no collider shape even remotely matches the shape of the ship, except maybe a capsule that's flipped on its side, but in order to match the water level in the boat, we would need to stretch the capsule vertically without stretching it horizontally, and that simply isn't possible. We could get around that by somewhat approximating the shape of the hull with multiple box colliders, and although stretching those properly would be a bit of a nightmare due to the fact that the hull gets slimmer further down, it would probably be a feasible solution. Even with that part taken care of though, we have another problem. If the player is inside those box colliders, the ray would be hitting the backside of the colliders, which means it wouldn't collide. This is just how collision detection works. Things only collide with the front side of colliders. We could solve that by simply casting a second ray just in reverse, which would then hit the front of the collider. But now consider this scenario. You're in the heat of battle, a cannon fires, followed by another and then another. Moments later, three cannonballs tear your ship's hull to shreds, leaving gaping holes which the sea quickly begins to try and fill. By the time you reach the bottom deck, the water level is over your head, because for some reason you decided to go all the way down instead of stopping on the stairs from where you could have easily reached the water and bailed it. However, you have yet to make your critical mistake, so you pull out your bucket, and without thinking about it, you try to fill it with water while looking straight ahead. Since you're entirely submerged, it would make sense that it would fill no matter which way you're aiming, but oh boy, you've never been more wrong. Moments later, your ship sinks and the enemy crew sends you to the underworld. You feel the rage building, so you send the developers a mean email about how their trash game is utterly broken and unplayable, right before uninstalling it. Now, while you're technically correct about the game being broken, it doesn't change the fact that the primary reason you sank and lost 3 hours worth of loot is because you decided to sail directly into someone else's broadside. So the question is, what did we overlook? Well, raycasts can only collide with the actual faces of colliders, which means that if the ray originates inside a collider, and the collider is big enough that the entire ray can be cast without it intersecting with one of the sides, even a second reversed ray wouldn't detect the collision. That means despite the fact that you're inside the interaction zone, you wouldn't be able to interact with that object, which of course in this case is our water, and now we have another mean email in our inbox. From there, I started considering all sorts of more complex solutions, like doing a raycast check, and then if that doesn't hit anything, also doing a physics.overlap sphere check. While that may have worked, I ended up with something much, much simpler. What I did was set up a few colliders to match the shape of the ship, all of them at the player's eye height. This means that basically no matter where you're standing on the lower deck, you'll be intersecting one of these colliders. Instead of hooking into the existing interaction system, which I'm honestly not sure why I was so hung up on doing that in the first place, I set it up separately. When you have your bucket out, which is still this placeholder cube, and you left click, the server will call physics.overlap capsule and find any of these colliders that you're touching. From there, it will grab the attached water bail detector component which stores the minimum height that the water needs to be at in order for you to bail where you're standing. You'll be able to bail on the very bottom as long as there's any amount of water, the slightly higher part requires a little more water, and in order to bail from near the top of the stairs, your ship needs to be almost sunk. This way you can't bail the little bit of water that's sitting in the bottom of your boat without even going downstairs, and I don't have to do any runtime resizing of colliders, which is great. I'm actually really happy with this solution. It's simple, relatively easy to get working, and it covers all the potential problems which other methods may have produced, including players being able to bail from outside the ship. It just goes to show how easy it is to overcomplicate things. 
At the moment, once you've filled your bucket with water, simply left clicking it again will empty it, but it doesn't account for the fact that you could be emptying it right back into the ship, meaning if you're about to sink, you could just go below deck and spam click your bucket a few times. That's obviously not what I want, but we'll take care of that in the next devlog. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like to let YouTube know you liked it and that it's worth recommending to other people, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.